In this movie, I'm going to show you how to use a Zoom H4n with a Sennheiser G2 wireless mic system to get great sound for movie making. I apologize for the movie being so long, but you really need to know everything that we're going to cover. The Sennheiser G2 wireless mic system first came out in 2005 and quickly became the best value on the market under $1,000. It has recently been replaced by the almost identical G3 series, which sells for $800 at B&H, including a body pack transmitter, lavalier mic, receiver, and a plug-on transmitter. You can find used G2 systems on eBay for $400 to $600. The G2 and G3 systems come in different frequency ranges that are noted as A, B, C, and so on. My particular system uses a frequency range of 740 to 776 megahertz. If you buy components separately on eBay, make sure you are buying in the same frequency group. Now for the setup and why I always use a quarter inch phone plug instead of XLR going into the Zoom. The Zoom digital recorder has two circuits that we care about for the purpose of this discussion. The first circuit is a pretty average quality uh, mic preamp circuit that amplifies the weak signal coming from a microphone. It is accessed using the XLR plug. The second circuit digitizes the amplified signal, creating the digital audio wave file. You can access the digitizers directly by using the phone plug. Doing so avoids the mic preamps in the first circuit. Your volume control becomes just a fader with the ability to attenuate your incoming line level signal, not amplify it. Because the Zoom XLR circuit wants only mic level input, you never, ever want to use it when you are connecting an amplified signal coming from a field mixer, audio board, or any line level device. Actually, you can't really do it, because to do so, you would need to lower the zoom volume to less than one to keep the full scale bars under zero. Recordings you make this way will sound crackly, distorted, and just plain awful. The only way to go into a zoom using front end equipment is through the quarter inch phone plug. The tricky part though, is that the zoom input is not line level. It is less. It is designed to receive the output from an electric guitar or keyboard. So if you're using pro level front end equipment like a field mixer or wireless receiver, its output must be adjustable downward in a range of 10 to 25 dBU. Alternately, you can use attenuated patch cords to get the same result. However, different setups are going to need different levels of attenuation. The G2 works in this scenario because its line level output can be adjusted downward to a level that the quarter inch plug circuitry likes. It is true that the Sennheiser G2 can be dialed all the way down to mic level for input through the Zoom XLR circuit. And this works okay in a pinch. However, why would you want to knock down a pristine amplified Sennheiser signal only to start over using the preamps in the Zoom? You wouldn't. You want to use a relatively superior amplified signal coming out of the Sennheiser by assessing the Zoom digitizers directly via the quarter inch phone plugs. Here's the setup. First, set up the Zoom. Set it up however you want to. However, I like to run 4824. And you must be sure that compressors and limiters are shut off. You need auto level off. I like mono mix on to get a stereo file from a mono input because I use dual eyes to replace the stereo track in my video clips. This way, all of my video clips have stereo audio and they can drop right into the primary tracks in Premiere. And you want Phantom off. Finally, dial volume all the way to 100. And set mics 1 and 2 on. That's it. Now I'm going to go ahead and hook up the Sennheiser receiver to the Zoom using a 3-foot unbalanced TS Mono to XLR patch cord that I have connected to the Sennheiser output XLR. The cord I'm using is a Technic XLF 
SP3 available at Markertech for about $9. You could build a custom eighth inch to Sennheiser, a uh, quarter inch, if you wanted to, and you can order that at Markertech as well. For this movie, I'm not going to pay attention to Sennheiser frequencies in the setup. I'm just using factory default. You can choose other frequencies after you get the levels right. So here we go. Fire up the Sennheiser receiver and immediately press the set button to bring up setting options. Cursor through to reset. OK. Do it. Then, for safety, let's lower the AF out all the way down to mic level. Now, attach your lavalier mic to your shirt and turn on the transmitter. Let's reset it. You can skip resetting if you don't need to do it. You're really just looking at mic sensitivity on transmitters and AF out on the receiver. Resetting puts your mic sensitivity at minus 10, which works for most recording situations. Mic sensitivity is really the volume control in the relationship between your mic, the transmitter, and the receiver. You want bars in the Sennheiser receiver to run in the middle to upper third. Your transmitter will flash a yellow LED if its sensitivity is set too high. AF out on the receiver controls the relationship between your Sennheiser package and your recorder. Going back to the receiver, let's dial in the AF out. First, arm the zoom and look at the bars while you speak a test sequence. Adjust the AF out until you get bars in the minus 12 range. Testing 1, 2, 3. Testing 1, 2, 3. You can go a little hot if you want to, remembering that the zoom volume control is wide open at 100. Dial it down a bit to fine tune peaks around minus 12. If this setting sounds low to you, it's not. Professional sound guys actually like to run at about minus 20 on a digital meter which is DBUFS, FS meaning full scale. You can tell the difference between analog DBU meters and digital DBUFS meters by looking at their range. Analog meters go way higher than zero and like to run around zero. Digital meters stop at zero, clip at zero, and usually have hash marks at about minus 12, which is where they like to run. The setup for the plug-on transmitter is exactly the same except that different mics will need different sensibility settings. The transmitter does not have phantom power, so your condenser mics need to be self-powered, or you can use dynamic mics, which don't need any power at all. Now for safety, let's go back into the zoom and set a limiter. Go to input, comp limit, input, scroll down to limit one, two, or three. I really don't know what the difference is. I use three. You must always set the zoom limiter after you have set the Sennheiser AF out. Otherwise, you won't see the high end effect that the AF setting has on the zoom. That's it. Let's take this setup for a spin. Okay, I have installed the zoom in the uh, Sennheiser transmitter into a little utility bag that I got at the hardware store. You can clip this on your belt, or more often I just leave it uh, laying around on a table somewhere. It doesn't really matter where you leave it. So this is the test. Uh, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Let's see if we can make this thing clip. Testing, one, two, three. Hopefully it didn't clip. Okay, uh, here we are with the uh, Sennheiser ME66 K6 short shotgun microphone and I have the uh, uh, transmitter attached to it. It's mounted on a tripod, which, or uh, I'm sorry, a uh, light stand that I use uh, often because I, I work alone. Um, here's the pack. Uh, as I said before, this can be left any place. Uh, but first a word about workflow. Um, and the question, do you have to tend to the recorder? Not, not really. I normally take one long audio clip per scene, so, which may take an hour or more to shoot. Uh, I fire this up, and then I go about shooting the scene. Let's say the scene is something like a guy comes in a room, talks to his friend, they get in a fight, the guy leaves. 
Uh, you're going to have a variety of setups. You're going to have flubbed lines. You're going to have direction. You're going to have people sitting around doing nothing. All of that's recorded on the one long audio take. At the end of the day, uh, I take the video clips with the camera sound and I put them on a computer and then I review them usually in Windows uh, Media Player because it has a nice big screen and I pick the ones I want. Uh, there's a keeper. I want this one, that one. No, no, no. I want that one. I then take those and I put them in a folder and then I take the hour-long audio clip and I put that in the same folder. If I've shot several scenes, I just take all the pics, you know, all the video and all the audio and put it in the same folder. Then using dual eyes, uh, I press a button or two and five minutes later, all of the video clips now have the zoom sound uh, connected to them. Uh, the next step then, uh, when I'm in my editing program, I bring in those finished clips with the great sound and immediately go uh, right click on the sound file and it asks me do I want to go to sound booth which is a professional qu uh, level audio editing program and I go over there and that's where I do all of the EQ and compression and limiting and noise reduction and stuff like that. I save it and then like magic uh, that embellished audio file is now in my timeline. So that's, uh, that's a process and that regards uh, how much do you have to do with this? Uh, nothing. Uh, like I said before, I've shot scenes in a bedroom and this package was uh, all the way across the house in the kitchen. So anyway, let's uh, test this. Testing. One, two, three. Testing one, two, three. And let's see if I can bust this one. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, now I'm using a Sennheiser vocal mic, which, you know, normally you want to talk pretty close to. Uh, it's also a very good mic uh, for noisy situations like interviews or at sporting events. Uh, I will note that I had to increase the sensitivity on, on the sending unit and I also had to increase the AF out uh, on the receiver in order to get the bars where, where I wanted them. So let's give this a test. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Let's see if we can clip this one. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Hopefully that didn't clip. I hope this movie has been helpful in learning how to record great sound on a Zoom H4N using the Sennheiser G2 or G3 wireless system at the front end. Thanks for watching.